Hey everybody, JB here, your guest reviewer for Cat Synth TV. Today we're going to be talking about the David Bowie album, Metropolist. Before we get started, I want to ask you to please subscribe to this channel for more cultural content coming out regularly. And please consider underwriting the efforts. There are links to the Patreon and Ko-Fi below. Okay, David Bowie, Metropolist. Most people know this album by a different name. This is actually a remix undertaken earlier this year by Tony Visconti of Bowie's 1970 album, The Man Who Sold the World. Metropolis, sort of a play on Metropolis, the silent film that we all know and love. So Tony Visconti undertook this uh, remix earlier this year in 2020. Apparently this was something that he and Bowie had discussed before Bowie's death. Some of you out there may be familiar with the remix that Tony Visconti did recently of the album Lodger that came out in the box set that from two or three years back. Same sort of thing happened here. Lodger was an album of incredible music that was hampered by kind of a, a very boxy, flat mix. Same can be said of The Man Who Sold the World or Metropolis. As you know it, 1970, as there was a lot of wonderful music coming out, but the technology sometimes was not there in order to reproduce the massive sound that Bowie was going for on this album. And let me just take a detour and say this for a second. Yes, this was a massive sound. Anyone who was familiar at the time with the work that Bowie had done on his 1967 album, self-titled, or his 1969 album, most widely known as Space Oddity or Man of Words, Man of Music, would have been totally unprepared for what happened on this album. The Man Who Sold the World, of course, is just a heavy album, you know, very much in line with maybe Led Zeppelin or Black Sabbath or the kind of heavy rock thing that was going on at the time. This is just a mind-blowingly heavy album. And the drums, you know, as wonderful as they were, sort of suffered in the original mix, the 1970 mix. So what Visconti did was go back to the original masters and remix the thing from scratch, except for one track. There's one track, uh, After All, which was not remixed at all because, as Visconti says, it was perfect as it is. The rest of the album built up again from scratch, and I'm telling you, it sounds incredible. There's much, much more presence to the drums, and the bass is just massive, and there's a lot of separation between the instruments. The original mix, as I said, a little bit murky at times. I mean, you know, it's something that you you accepted, but you know, seeing the it in the new light, it's a bit like, what would I compare it to? Well, you know, maybe something like the Sistine Chapel restoration that happened, gosh, what is that now? About 25, 30 years ago. In any case, it's the same kind of thing. You know, it's shocking at first. You know, you saw these bright cartoony colors and it's like, wait a minute, this is something totally different, but it's something that Wow, this is the original intention, so pretty amazing. Speaking of bright cartoony colors, one of the interesting things about the Metropolis issue is we have a restoration of the original intended artwork that appeared in a different version uh, of the original American issue of the album. This is by the British uh, cartoonist Michael Weller. Now, of course, there was a variation of this used for the original uh, American cover. We can see that the title was changed and the bit of dialogue in the balloon was whited out, apparently, in order to avoid controversy. Then when it was the album was issued in the United Kingdom a few months later, it had the dress cover that we know and is more widely known now because this has been the standard for the CD reissue. However, there was also this cover, the black and white cover, that I knew from the LP issue. This was a reissue that was done after the success of Ziggy Stardust. And there's even this really bizarre German variant cover. Pretty hideous, but you know, it's out there. It's one of those things. So the album has gone through a number of different cover arts. I mean, personally, the the Metropolis cover, I think it's wonderful. I'm really into it. It kind of stands apart. 
in uh, David Bowie album covers because, you know, with the exception of Black Star, uh, every album cover has featured a photograph or illustration, at least, of Bowie on the cover. So this is, this is an interesting one, an interesting curio. So the question is, if I already own this album, do I really, really need the reissue? Well, that's always the question, isn't it? I mean, if you're a fan of this album and you especially want to hear this album presented in a new way, I say you definitely need to hear this thing. Man. It brings out a lot of detail in there. I, you know, I touched on the drums a little bit, the separation, but the Moog stuff that's on there, the early synthesizer stuff is just, it. you hear a lot more of it. There's some things, there's some parts in Save Your Machine, the track Save Your Machine, for example, that I never even realized were there until this new mix. So it's definitely, definitely worth it to me to get this new uh, reissue. The casual Bowie listener, maybe not, but you know, if, if there's a choice between for the consumer of the 21st century, between getting the original mix and the spiffed up mix, you might want to go, you know, right to the spiffed up mix, because again, it was supervised by the same man who mixed the original album, Tony Visconti, the same producer. And so, is it wildly different from the original? No, I mean, it's not like a dub remix. It's not like he, he completely went you know nuts and changed everything. It's very respectful to what you know there, but it brings out a lot more detail. It's really fascinating. So yeah, two thumbs up from me. I'm telling you, go check it out. You'll love it. Thanks for watching. Check out more at www.catsynth.com. And please subscribe to CatSynth TV. This has been JB here for CatSynth TV. See you next time.